Good morning. Monday, August 21st. I'm um, just getting ready to leave from the Trout Haven Park and Campground. Just about got camp uh, broken down as you can see. Um, tents still up but uh, that's all that has to be done. Air mattress, everything's put away. Bags are just about on the bike. Um, yeah, pretty good place to stay. I definitely would recommend if you're in the area to stop in and check it out. Uh, it's $40 for the camping uh, for the campground so if you have more people it's cheaper but there is a nice uh, washroom with showers and all that too and that $40 comes with uh, water and electricity right over there on right on uh, on site so yeah not a bad deal at all so anyways we're gonna be heading for Chatham today um, just under 100 kilometers we got all day to do it we're gonna be setting out right around 8 a.m. And I'm hoping that the forecast is true, that the tail, that the winds have switched a bit so that they might help us out for a change. So anyways, I'm going to finish getting this camp taken down and then we're going to hit the road. All right, just leaving Trout Haven campground. Good place, recommend it. Morning. We've left basically the Strathroy area. We are on the road. And uh, it looks like a weird kind of day. It's foggy. <clears throat> Almost feels like it's raining a bit, but I think it's just the mist from the fog. Saying there's a 2% chance of rain, so. cedar tree just standing there by itself that thing's got some age along with that weather vane right there too southwest middle essex the hosta capital of the world huh. Interesting claim. Well, we're coming into Appen here. Um, the fog has basically started to wear off finally. That's good. Moving along nice. It's nice to have some tailwinds for a change. Down Main Street Glencoe, guys. Literally. This is Main Street by name as well. I'm probably gonna have to... Just stopped off at Timmy's in Glencoe. All right, just going through the little community of Newbury, population 466. Well, it's to our right. We're going straight. Looks like there might be some amenities if you would have turned right. So.
Chatham Kent County, so <laughs> we're touching her. Chatham, that is. <laughs> All right, still traveling along. Only got about 40k to Chatham, making really good time. It's really crazy what difference a day can make as far as the wind and all that goes. So anyways, I really tried to enjoy a break right here, but I'm getting bombarded by mosquitoes and black flies, even though I have repellent on. So um, moving on. By the way, I wanted to mention that place I was just at, that's the third time I've been there in the last few years, um, stopping on the way back home. So kind of cool. the gravel again for the first time today looks okay though can't wait to get something for this headache it's only increasing in intensity so gotta take something soon or there's the point of no return unfortunately i think we got about 15k to get to chatham we'll come soon enough all right i just stopped off for about 15k out of uh chatham and i remember going by this uh little graveyard setting here before field cemetery all very old everybody died uh the the dates are um in the mid to early 1800s not sure why it seems like everybody died at a really young ages here um, i know people died younger back in the day but these people are in their 20 and 30s so hmm interesting doesn't seem to be one family in particular but very cool Made it to Chatham. I remember going on that trail when I uh, was heading up. Good morning everyone, Tuesday, August 22nd. I did not do a sign out for last night because by the time I got here, I was not feeling good at all. So 
as you remember me saying, I had a really bad headache. So I came to a place I've stayed at before, the Saxony Motel. Really good place. I cannot say enough good things. Um, the price is really reasonable. The rate is only $100 plus tax um, per night. And um, they actually gave me a break because I'm uh, doing, I'm struggling a little bit financially as usual. So she gave me a little discount on the room as well. So if you're in Chatham, Ontario, check out the Saxony Motel. Um, you'll be very happy. Rooms are updated and very clean and the place is quiet. So anyways, I am heading to home to Windsor today. So um, that'll be nice. It's been a, a long haul on the road so far. So the tailwinds are looking favorable again today. So uh, let's do it. <laughs> All right, just making our way through and out of Chatham. 90 kilometers to get home, so actually about the same as what we've been doing, a little less maybe. Came through here last night, if you remember, uh, or yesterday afternoon, I should say. Got to be careful in these areas because a lot of kids and homeless people and that hang out here and there can be a lot of glass and stuff. Neat spot though, coming over the river here. Hope you can see it through the chain link started so I'm not really uh, in the mood to stop here and take a look and it's kind of like I said homeless people in that all right still in Chatham Thought I'd show you this, it's kind of cool. Obviously to do with the war for home and empire. Canadians fought at Vimy, Ypres, Mons, a bunch of other places. Very cool. Some cool carvings here too. One of Ray Charles, the rest are of, like, I don't know, this one's got a koi on it, I think. Very nice, though. There's Ray Charles. Cool stuff. All right, let's get out of Chatham, though. Or as they say, let's get out of Dodge. Totally out of Chatham. <laughs> Great day for riding. The tailwinds look to be favorable for us all day long. Right into Windsor, so. The Thames, it's a pretty big river, pretty long. I'll get the stats on that. I definitely would like to canoe it from its source to, uh, where, it, to its, uh, where it ends, I believe, near Lighthouse Cove, which isn't too far from Windsor. It'd be epic. All right, let's get rolling. Just cruising along still. Um, we just went through a prairie siding a little bit ago. Just cruising along here. Um, I mean, this is the waterfront trail, part of the Trans Canada Trail. Um, 
Yeah. I'll put what highway we're on if I think about it. Anyways, yeah, making really good time. Pretty easy riding today, so be in Windsor in no time at all. Starting to get into turf that I'm very familiar with now. I mean, I've been this way before anyways, but as far as living in Windsor and driving out to the county and all that my whole life, we're getting there. We're near Lighthouse Co, which is a community on uh, Lake St. Clair, not far from Windsor, so good stuff. What a glorious day for riding. Not just saying that because it's sunny out. Humidity is okay. Um, temperatures are good. And we have tailwinds, which is probably the most important thing, so. Oh, dead carrots. Umber side road. I'm gonna stop in a bit and snack it up. I should have stopped sooner, but there hasn't really been any good place to stop. And I know that about this area, so. See the windmills? I'm not sure if you can tell, but the wind is still in our favor. We'll have to take a right up here. Be a little bit of a headwind, but for a very short time. Just stopped here. Uh, where are we? Just stopped here in a little community not far outside of Windsor called Deerbrook. We're uh, actually stopped on uh, kind of the property of the Rochester Golf Course, and then there's an RV park behind me as well. Um, yeah, so it's a beautiful day for riding. The winds have been awesome. Temperature's great. Traffic's been fairly light actually for a, a weekday. So happy about that. And um, yeah, I'm gonna stop in Bell River which is not too far from here and grab a coffee and probably something to eat just stopped off ate a couple muffins i got from the continental breakfast at the saxony motel in chatham and gonna be on our way so yeah gonna be home in windsor pretty soon and i'm looking forward to sitting down in front of the laptop and doing uh, hours and hours of video editing really looking forward to that putting this all together i've been formulating kind of how i want to do it how i want to lay it out time frame and all that as i've been riding today so we're gonna get going, get back on the road, and uh, leave this RV campground behind. Bell River. Very short drive from Windsor. <clears throat> Coffee time. All right, when we come over this hill, you'll see Lake St. Clair. Well, it sort of looks like a small lake if you look on a map, it's huge. <clears throat> it's nestled in amongst the Great Lakes and is part of all that cargo ship uh, water routeways. I'm not gonna hang around here too long, I just wanted to show you guys. Bell River Marina is basically where we're at. And there's Lake St. Clair. You can see shore over there. 
there and then it's the bigger part of the lake over up straight up there and off to our right when you see it from an airplane you can tell how massive it is that's Windsor over that way straight sort of see the Renaissance Center from the Detroit that's on the Detroit side pretty cool really good fishing in these waters walleye uh, bass musky perch not so much perch as they are in Lake Erie but there's the marina pretty full it is a Tuesday so there's most people's boats are in dock all right I'm gonna take a tiny break here but then we're gonna get rolling for Windsor just cruising along this little uh, kind of like cottage lane it's called I think I don't know It's not really about the property here. It's right on the lake to the right, so. Can't really get going too fast through here. So just keep that in mind if you're following my route at all. It's a pretty sweet route, but if you're trying to lay down some times, this ain't the route. If you are following my road, it may look like you're coming to dead ends, but there are always ways for bicycles to get across, as you see. Let's be respectful of people. I never go fast through these sections, people, please. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, like I said, you're not going to set any record speeds, but it's uh, it's pretty relaxed back here, so. <laughs> Gives you a view out to Lake St. Clair there. These are just little uh, canals and creeks that flow into um, Lake St. Clair, but they do control the flow. I don't believe there's any power generation here, but pretty cool. I thought I would show you this. We're still working our way like through this little labyrinth of uh, kind of cottage roads along Lake St. Clair here. Now we're coming up into the more like bigger houses and some mansions and stuff like that. So just thought I'd share. It's nice to see this kind of bike uh, infrastructure here closer to home. Gotta be careful for debris though. A lot of screws, nails and other crap. Just on Riverside Drive, um, I think we're more in Decumsey, which is just outside of Windsor, essentially a part of Windsor. Um, it used to be a real death trap to ride your bike because you had to go on the road, but they took all the sidewalks out and made them into a uh, uh, path, a uh, multi-use path. So kudos. It's not super fast going, but it's actually not too bad. It's just you gotta watch when you go across driveways and intersections right so some of the uh this stuff is a little bumpy too they can work on that there's no need for that all right so we were in Decumsey there's the sign if you're going the other way and then on the other side of the road is the side for Welcome to Windsor. So there you go. There you go. That's the scoop. And there's the sign, as I was saying. The Ganacho Trail. It's been around for decades, I think. A couple decades, probably. Maybe more. Just coming up to where Lake St. Clair flows into uh, the Detroit River. Got 
had us a good offshore breeze, so water's pretty choppy. Uh-oh. We got a goose traffic jam. This is Windsor for you guys. Watch out, guys. So yeah, Windsor's it has to be the goose capital of Canada. Traveled all over it. I've never seen anything like it. Here's another uh, colony. <laughs> okay guys, let me get through, okay? All right, there you go. You're good. Careful with the sand. I got a lot of air in the tires, so. So yeah, this is where the Detroit River starts. It's not a super long river, but very important one. the city marina we are just looking at there. This is the Detroit River. This area here is called the Peace Fountain. There's a fountain out there. One second. Fountain right there. Lights up. Big waterworks and colors. That is the Renaissance Center right there. Right there. So that's Detroit. That's Michigan on that side of the river. And this is Windsor over here. This is all a bunch of flower, good uh, flower gardens and stuff like that for anybody that's into the botanical. And we're heading that way. So uh, yeah, down to one camera. Um, I'm almost out of memory cards. It's almost working out perfectly. Won't be long till this trip's done and then we'll be moving on to another one. I'm not sure if what we're gonna do to end the Euro, but we'll do something. So anyways, let's keep rolling. Just going by Heron Walkers here on the left and right. Whiskey drinkers will know. If you could smell it, oh my goodness. I might get intoxicated just from smelling it. Holy strong. It's the fermenting smell, I do believe. It smells like home. One of their older buildings up here on the right building up here very old very beautiful fully restored got some pictures I'll try and throw up right here just to give you a closer look at that brickwork riverside and onto the riverfront trail here Usually a weekday mid-afternoon, this trail's not too busy. Casino Windsor straight ahead, that big white building. And then a good shot of the Renaissance Center across the Detroit River there. I guess I take that for granted because I've seen it so many times, but...
this will take us right to the Ambassador Bridge that crosses over to Michigan, Detroit. There is also a tunnel, for those of you who don't know that. police a lot of recreational boating um, on the river and then both lakes uh, lakes uh, Detroit River is bookend by um, Lake Erie to the left and Lake St. Clair that away these were the where uh, trains used to come in off of uh, ships and stuff like that to unload uh, cargo and that haven't been used for many decades try not to drop the camera into the water but a lot of uh, tree pulp and stuff like that washed into the water right now. That's a little uh, cruise ship you can go up and down the river in. So, big, huge Canadian flag. My bike. Caesars Casino, Windsor. That's the motel and that's the casino over there and motel as well. So, pretty cool. We're going to be heading that way towards the Ambassador Bridge. I don't know if you can see it over there, but that's where we're headed. This must be something new. I've never seen this before. The Trans Canada Trail, Windsor, Ontario, point zero. Never heard that before. All right, there's the Ambassador Bridge straight ahead. International border crossing. Really have to be careful coming around this one with this long grass here. Okay. Oh, it's been repaved. Oh, this little section anyways. More geese. Ambassador Bridge in all its glory. She's an old one. I'll try and put some info up there. Span Bridge. Might be able to see some cargo ships. That red object in the in the foreground. Sorry, in the background there. probably see it now. Unloading on the American side but they do the same on this side as well. The Gordie Howe Bridge is being just built around the bend of the river here. You won't be able to see it. Might be able to get a shot of the tower at some point before we get home but I'm going to stop at the end and give you guys a better view of the bridge. Alright, that's the Canadian side. It goes for a little ways actually onto land before you, uh, the end of the bridge actually happens. Boom. Ambassador Cross and there's Detroit right over there. So, said I'm pretty used to it, so I wasn't even really going to film much of it. But I realized that a lot of you aren't familiar with it, so here we are. It's been a good ride. I'm almost home. Only a few k to go. We're going to cut through Micmac Park. Well, we're going to go through Sandwich Town, Micmac Park, Malden Park, and then home. So, let's get her done. Got you there. I'm, it's to do with the War of 1812. I'm, I've never stopped to read it though. So yeah, this is historic <laughs> sandwich town as you can tell. Established 1797. About as old as it gets in Canada for the most part. I'm 
go by the first bike shop I ever worked at. It's now a cannabis store and something else. Up, you'll see the bikes on the side of the building there, courtesy bicycles. That's where I worked before. It's a lot different now. That's her. Kate Ashbury. Founding of Sandwich. There's a lot of cool plaques if you're in the area. If you're interested in the War of 1812, there's tons of tons of info on that good documentaries on PBS about it. Alright, Malden Park. We've been here before. Those who watch the channel. You can come in on the opposite side. So this is it, like a kilometer left. Ooh, she's really growing right now, looks good. Three weeks. See what the yard looks like. Alright, we are home. I am going to get cleaned up and settled in and then I'm going to do some closing remarks on the day, the trip and all that stuff. So uh, yeah, thanks for joining me and um, I'll get back to you in a bit. All right, as you can see, the seasons have changed. Um, we fast forward to October 21st, and um, yeah, some time has gone by, and I've had plenty of time to think about the trip. It's been almost two months I've been editing the video. Um, those of you that have been following along, I just want to give a huge thanks. It really means a lot to me. A lot of time and effort is put into these things. Um, not just money with all the equipment, but just my time doing the trips. And then, like I said, I've been editing this video since I got home and putting the videos out. So I just wanted to come over here to my local park after having enough time to think about it and let you guys know what I thought about the five weeks out on the road, solo, touring with people and all that stuff. So let's get into it. All right, beautiful October 21st day, like I mentioned, here in Windsor, Ontario. Couldn't ask for a really nicer fall day. It's supposed to uh, rain later on, so I saw, thought I would come out and share my thoughts on the trip. The stats on the trip uh, are as follows. 2,149 kilometers from July 13th to August 22nd, covering two provinces, and probably the best stat of all, zero flats. Couldn't ask for anything better than that. Um, I really have been lucky throughout the last four or five years with flats in general. I'm not gonna get into what the elevation gains were or the total elevation uh, climbing I did for the whole trip because I came to realize that uh, my All Trails app, the elevation gains are wildly incorrect. Um, they're always way too high. So I, uh, I'm not gonna get into those stats. I am gonna switch to Ride With GPS next year for traveling. Um, I used them before. I just noticed All Trails was a little less expensive. So I thought I'd give them a shot. Not bad overall, but I find the Ride With GPS ride with GPS has more features and um, even though it's a little more expensive it's probably a little more reliable overall 
So two months has gone by and I've had a lot of time to reflect on this trip, like I said. And um, really, I just want to say what an amazing trip it was. It turned into be a really great adventure and I uh, wouldn't uh, go back on it for anything. I moved locations, as you can see, guys. We have a uh, grade school track meet going on here today, a cross-country meet actually going on here today, so I uh, don't want to get in their way and uh, kind of distracting when I'm trying to talk as well. So one thing that did happen this summer is I was able to ride with other people, and I've been asked a few times, what do I prefer? group riding or solo riding and I have to say honestly I know it kind of sounds like a sitting on the fence kind of you know answer but I really like both and I think they both have really good benefits for sure I'm um, riding with other people is really nice um, just for the interaction sharing the experience when you get to camp having someone to to talk to to uh, share the day's experiences with and uh, really just to have that company there um, a lot of times you spend the day riding and it's go 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 during the day and then you stop and there's kind of nothing to do um, you're tired and you usually just crawl in your tent and go to sleep so having that camaraderie uh, after the uh, ride was really nice for sure um, then there's the obvious benefits of when you're in town and you need to go into a store you don't have to leave your bike outside worrying about if it's going to get ripped off running through the store and not getting half of the things you need to start with so that's a real big benefit as well um, the big thing for solo riding that I can see is the ability to go at your own pace. Um, for me, being a YouTuber and doing the videos, um, I find it a little easier to film the way I want when I'm by myself because I'm not worried about slowing other people down, having to ask people to stop. So as far as filming aspect, I really do find solo to be a little better for that. Um, but there's a give and take with everything, right? It just all depends on who you're touring with, if they're willing to, to accommodate the YouTube thing as well. So yeah, it's really great to tour with other people for sure, and it's really great to do it on your own. So it's kind of nice that I enjoy doing both um, and see the benefit to both. And I'm really hoping to do more group touring in the future as well. I've got some pretty big solo stuff lined up as well too, so um, we're going to talk about that a little more coming up. Of course, when I put out my video about my mental health struggles, the support was overwhelming in a positive way, and I, I can't say enough about it. It really changed my life for the better and has put me on a really good course, I think, to set myself up for better things in the future. All right, as far as the trip goes, getting back to that again, um, I started out, I was heading up to Quebec. That was my main goal, heading up to Quebec to meet Jacques. Um, it was all part of the journey, of course, the Quebec part of it was just uh, a segment of it on the way up I rode up through Ontario um, as you have seen in the videos if you've if you followed there's a link up here if you want to get started at the beginning from where this all started right up here in the right hand corner so check that out on the way up I stopped in Oshawa met my really good friend Julie stayed with her for a little while actually so we could do an overnight tour to Emily Provincial Park and it was really just a great little tour quick overnighter about 50k one way 50k back i'm um, very relaxing kind of a mixed bag of weather with rain and uh sunshine so really good trip um i want to thank julie for everything especially driving me through toronto to milton and saving me driving through that metropolis i really do appreciate it julie thanks a lot um and it's been great getting to know you and um, can't, i'm looking forward to doing some rides in the future with you as well so thanks for everything julie so after julie's i made my way up to quebec met up with jacques and we spent some time at his cottage had a great stay there their cottage is absolutely amazing really kind of to me heaven on earth really in my opinion so really enjoyed my stay there I couldn't have picked a better place to have to uh, wait for that wheel to come in and we won't get into that that's water under the bridge I don't even want to talk about that stupid wheel anymore but anyways I really want to thank Jacques and Catherine for uh, their hospitality and generosity while I was there um, it was great company great food um, great location as I've already said so thank you very much Jacques thank you very much for the tour I really do appreciate it my friend you're a great riding partner a great human being gentleman and a scholar and all that good stuff so thanks a lot Jacques it was a great tour and I'm really positive there's going to be many more in the future so hope you're doing well buddy as I already mentioned um, and I just want to get back to it again because it was part of the tour while I was out there I posted a video about my struggles with my mental health um, I was really apprehensive and really nervous to do that as many people would be it's just a hard thing to talk about even though it's becoming more common to hear about mental health struggles and people going through it 
it's still a tough thing personally to put out there so i just want to say like i said i was blown away by the support i received from everybody um, emotionally of course financially as well but i just want to say the words of support the emotional support means every bit as much as the financial support the support i received from people and the stories i've heard and the words of encouragement and advice and everything honestly has changed my life for the better i have a lot more hope going forward for the future i really do so i just want to say thank you very much everybody for reaching out and being there for me um, and i hope you'll continue to be there in the future and if you need somebody i'll be there for you as well but and to everybody that contributed financially thank you very much i'm not going to name names because i'm just so worried about leaving somebody out but please know that i don't have a lot of money and every cent matters whether it's 500 or 5,000. so thank you very much i really do appreciate it it meant the world to me and helped me get home and that means a lot to me so thank you very much so yeah between the niagara tour and the ontario quebec tour if we'll call it that it was another big year um, probably the numbers weren't as huge as some previous years with um, the Cross Canada stuff that happened and all that as well. But it was another big year, a really good year for meeting people, uh, making some new friends, um, which is huge in my life. Um, probably that to me is probably the biggest benefit is the friends I've met along the way. So I just want to thank everybody for being a part of it. Those of you that followed along on these couple tours, thank you from the bottom of my heart. It really means a lot to new subscribers. Welcome aboard. To anybody watching that's not subscribed, please do subscribe. It would mean the world to me. So anyways, guys, I'm going to be doing an update video coming up real soon about what's going on with the Great Divide mountain bike route, uh, when that's going to happen time frame wise and a bunch of other things. I'll let you know what's going on in my life uh, in a day to day life and a bunch of other stuff. So stay tuned for that. It'll be coming up real soon. Um, it's not going to be a real exciting adventure video, but it's just going to let you guys know what's happening and what I'm planning for 2024. And um, if you wanna help out, you can do so. There's my Patreon, which really hasn't taken off. So I'm kind of considering maybe getting rid of the Patreon now that YouTube has this uh, com community join button. So it's almost the same as Patreon. You'll see beside the subscribe button, the little join tab. If you click on that, you see different options for joining the channel. It's really kind of the same as Patreon. You'll get to see videos earlier and all that good stuff. There will be perks as it grows too, so stay tuned for that. Um, if you're interested, I'd really appreciate it if you could check that out. It really would help me out a lot. There's also Buy Me A Coffee um, that is a really good way as well, and a lot of people have used that already, so check that out. And there's always e-transfers, so if that's something you're interested in, let me know, and I'll get my uh, email address to you. So anyways, guys, this has already been a pretty long video, so I'm going to wrap it up from here. But uh, Thanks for everything. Thanks for watching the videos up to now. Thanks for watching this video. And I really hope you guys are getting out there and doing something you love as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.